Hello, my friends. I haven't titled this video yet. I'll get around to it. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you for a while. I haven't seen you in a little bit. I've been barricaded, but now we're coming out. Let's see, I need to shave. What do you think about this Ruth Blatter Ginsburg situation? Oh boy, oh boy. You know, I was a little bit concerned there because I know that the uh, Democrat governors are sending out 10 million ballots each. And if there's anything that they know how to do, it's how to use those ballots. So, um, you know, no doubt, Philadelphia, I think they, last time they, they checked, um, they were suspicious about the election results in, the, in Philadelphia because um, normally 50% of the people vote, but they had like 110% vote Democrat last time. So there's a little bit of a challenge there. But you know, as well as I do, that the election's going to be uh, won by Trump and then attempted to be stolen by Democrats. That's just the way it is because that's, they're basically like a mob, aren't they? I mean, have they done anything in the last three or four years that doesn't look to you? And then, of course... You know, I'm just so disappointed with the fact that they can't seem to say anything um, about, you know, wanton rioting and destruction. Seems to me that they, this righteous, you know, party that says so many offenses with Donald Trump would certainly have a better, more refined sense of religious values. A uh, little bit of indignation might help, but no, they're not doing anything. But anyway... What happened was, you know, so I said, I said, okay, here's what's going to happen. There's going to be an election night Trump victory. Then it's going to be, whoop, every vote counts. And they're going to keep on, you know, ballot, you know, harvesting their votes. And there's no way that they could possibly even, remember, we're still trying to figure out who won the Iowa caucus. Remember that? I, just remember that. We're still, the Democrats couldn't even figure out who the heck won. It was Pete Buttigieg or it was, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders, uh, and uh, they, they still don't know. They're still trying to figure. They're still trying to figure out the Iowa caucus. But they're going to do. And New York's a hilarious thing. I mean, I think they got like a million votes. They're still sorting out for an election six months ago. So I'm sure the country. You know, the chaos is there. We know that. We know that. So what will happen is, of course, is going to be there's 700 lawyers, by the way, in the Democratic part, uh, part uh, for every one, um, you know, a Republican lawyer. And this is always a problem. Because apart from three Christians that I know that have law firms, nobody wants to take on the left. I mean, Hillary Clinton can, you know, she can strip her um, computer, uh, burn 30,000 emails, smash 20 phones, and they couldn't find a single conservative Republican in Washington that wanted to say, well, maybe we should go to court over it. Meanwhile, Soros is buying up these, these DAs left and right who are, um, who are uh, you know, hear what Bloomberg did? Oh, this guy, this guy's a sweetheart. He puts like uh, several million dollars into Florida to um, to pay the like like pay what for the, the bills for criminals in the Latino community because he knows that by um, by getting them out of jail or whatever he's doing with his money uh, that they're going to be endeared to him and vote for Biden. Uh, I think the Latino, I think the Hispanic community is far smarter than that, and I think these guys ought to be exposed for for thinking they're stupid that they could be manipulated like that. But anyway, so here's the story. So the election comes along November third. Trump wins by midnight. Nobody calls it, of course, because every vote counts. Every every vote counts. And then they're going to start counting those votes. And they're going to come in. They're going to, then they're going to find mail bags of Republican votes that never made it to the post office. And there's all kinds of shenanigans. The country's going to go, woo! And um, meanwhile, somewhere between then and December 10th, they have to make a, a certified announcement. Trump's going to, of course, he's going to reject all of the states with the, uh, with the the that are going to try to overturn them. And right now, they're doing, like, they're already doing their ballot shenanigans in Michigan because Trump won by like only 14,000 votes. Remember that, or 20,000 votes in like Wisconsin. So they're beefing up right now. They're making sure that never happens again. And, and so uh, then Trump's going to say, well, I challenge all those results. You guys are showing up. And the state attorney, it's not a state attorney, general, but the um, secretary of states who are also bought off and paid for strategically in so many cases. Uh, they're going to certify now the results for Democrats are legitimate. Now, I'm not saying that because I'm a Democrat. I'm just saying. And then, then it's going to go up to the next circuit court level, which is dominated by Democrats. And then it would go to the Supreme Court. And what I was concerned about, by this time, you got all the riots and the yelling and the screaming and the people in Washington. And then you got these nice... Nice conservatives, you know, they're, you know, kind of shell-shocked under attack again. And uh, the, the plan was that, you know, they'd have like a split vote and then Justice Roberts, who's never reliable, would make the decision. And there would be this, this, this you know, mandate that, you know, every vote counts. There's overwhelming evidence the popular vote. I mean, California alone is going to, you know, because half of Mexico, I think, votes in California. So they're, they're going to have a tremendous turnout. So what will happen is that it will come down to that Justice Roberts 
And I was worried about him. I was saying, we got to pray for him. He waffles. I vague. He doesn't even like Trump. He's got to live with these people. Don't forget, they got wives and kids. They have Thanksgiving with the in-laws. And they're all talking, oh, this Donald Trump, this Donald Trump. I'm telling you what it is. I mean, you can see like Tim Keller. I'm going to have to deal with that situation. He's in, he's in Manhattan. He can't, he can't vote your conscience. Well, if you're going to vote your conscience, right? what's your conscience say about abortion? Well, we, there's, there's extenuating circumstances about abortion. He goes on a Facebook post, and he, he covers every single moral issue that you probably vote for. And he says, well, I could see arguments on both sides. I can't say how to vote. So, I mean, this is what happens when you're living in New York. Why don't you just come out and say it? I live in New York. I can't tell you the truth. Or I live in New York. I don't want to think the truth. But to come out and say, well, I don't know. I think maybe this, maybe that. And they may be on the abortion. Well, you know. Especially going to John the Baptist in the wilderness. I mean, they're asking him questions. You know, the soldiers, what do we do? He didn't say, well, I don't know. I'm kind of confused today. Maybe sometimes you should be content with your wages, but sometimes you should get an increase. Maybe you should negotiate with a lawyer. Maybe if you got a union going, I can't say right now. Hilarious. Anyway, that's, that's Tim Keller. Uh, well, by the way, I've got his books back here. Brilliant when he's not under pressure having to deliver an analysis that will make him unpopular in his own church, which is largely probably liberal in New York anyway. So anyway, that, uh, having said that, the, uh, what happened? So it goes up to the Supreme Court, and then Justice Roberts has got to make the decision. But then, to my absolute amazement, Ruth Ginsburg dies. And of course, you know her, her, uh, her last wish which I'm sure the last thing somebody says, you know, when they're with their family stepping into eternity is, I'll make sure that they, they, the president doesn't appoint somebody. Um, I'm sure that's not what she said. So anyway, but that's the, that's the pathology of what's being said and talked about. So, uh, but then when she dies, what does that do? Well, you see, here's the interesting thing. That removes the situation. No, we're not out of the woods yet because, I mean, you know, if there's one thing that, Demo that Republicans are good at, it's snatching uh, defeat out of the jaws of victory. So we gotta, we got to keep praying for them because they're not, they're not notorious. First of all, they're always playing defense. They're never on offense. So these Republicans, you know, they, they, what they have to do, and there's 27 incidents in history when the president and the Senate is in one party where they can appoint somebody, you, you know, it's going to, the Democrats are going to, of course, so we have to do an absolute background check, this woman, um, you know, she's, um, she said something, we have evidence of her saying once, uh, but, and they're always going to have a reason why we have to wait until after the election, blah, blah, blah. but it's very possible that they're going to be able to get to one more person. Now, you never know, with the conservatives, have you ever noticed? Uh, with a liberal, you get one liberal, they're reliable. If you get a conservative like Gorsuch <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, the rest of them, I'm drawing a blank on them right now, they, 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 they're not reliable because I think they're trying to please the, the liberals every now and then. And so it's like that if you're a conservative, you need two conservatives to get one reliable vote. That's the point. So it's just, it's just um, Kavanaugh. That's the other one. Kavanaugh. And, uh, so, yeah, we, I mean, I love these guys, but they're not reliable. So... So you have to get another one. But now the way that this is going is it would like they're going to go through, but da, 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 and then, of course, Kamala Harris. Remember this. It's not about Joe Biden. Joe Biden's not gonna be president. Joe Biden, they, they have no plans on Joe Biden being president. Georgie Soros, David Axelrod, and Obama, and Eric Holder, and uh, Crazy Carville, and the whole crew, they already picked who the next president is, and that's Kamala Harris. Now, it doesn't matter that Kamala Harris couldn't even pass, the, could she even get 5% of, uh, of the vote for the, for the left. doesn't matter that she was the worst candidate that they had. They're, she's the one that will beat Barack Obama's revenge in Hillary 2.0. That's it. I so, remember I said a year ago, I said it's Kamala Harris's election. It's not even Joe Biden. I was so shocked that she didn't make it that I thought I was a false prophet. Then I realized what a true prophet I am. I'm so good at this sometimes. I'm not, I don't make a lot of, I don't, I don't prophesy a lot. And that's the secret. Don't say a lot, but only say it when you see it. And I kept seeing, I kept seeing this image of her, like, you know, at the inauguration. And she, and she didn't do like a Bible thing. She was like, she had something slipped in. Like, I don't know, a Koran and a Bible. Who knows what the heck she's going to come up with. But, um, you, know, the, the, you know, Guinness Book of World Records, World Religions. But I, I saw, I kept seeing this image. And, I, you know, but I realized something. I realized, you remember Back to the Future? It's like with Marty. Marty had that little picture. And it's like he kept seeing his face, you know, he's fading out, he's fading out, he's fading out. And then when he was getting back in time, he would come back in. Well, I think sometimes the Lord's saying, it's like that pastor, the Covington pastor guy. You know, he, listen, he called this thing. He said, I see the, I see riots and burning and where's, the, where's President Trump? And there's back deals and they're all happy politicians slapping each other on the back and all the money getting sucked out and head for the hills and get your soybeans and a gun and get your Wi-Fi sorted out with your kids. 
But I mean, that's not a long-term strategy for apostolic victory. So I, I had some suspicions about the fact that he's, he was having what I was having. He was having those prophetic panic attacks because he was seeing what the devil wants to do. And I still think the devil wants to do it. It's like I kept seeing Kamala Harris at the inauguration. Now this, hey, man, this will blow your mind. This was over a year ago. And you could ask, ask I, I was putting it out there, but then I, I kept pulling back. So I said, I even put a Facebook post, President Harris. It was the weirdest, crazy thing. It was right before COVID. And it was an article covering Wuhan, Wuhan, China, working with the Democrat Party in doing data research for them doing their targeted uh, voter turnout. And this was during the primaries when Kamala Harris and, and, the, and the Epic Times, you could see it. President Kamala Harris is what they want, and they're working with Wuhan. Hey, hey, you can't make this stuff up. So when Wuhan comes up as being, you know, the, the, you know, the bio capital of the, um, you know, it's kind of like uh, in the movie Aliens where that thing comes out. So they just released that virus. They let, let it go. They don't, you see, the Chinese people don't care if they're, I hate to say this, but it's, Chinese people are beautiful, but the communist Chinese don't care if they kill a million people because they got a problem. They're 200 million metric tons short of wheat this year. So they figure, well, we kill a few, you know, they, you know what, what can we say? At least we don't have starving people. We wiped them out. But, you know, they knocked off all the flights to Beijing. They made sure the flights were going to New York. So they said, we're going to get this thing over the United States. We're going to we're going to release this pandemic, but we're going to be okay here. And if we lose some people, so what? We got 1.2 billion people. We got too much people anyway and not enough wheat. So I, I think that, I really do think that they did this. I think they're that cunning, that, that diabolic, and I think people can be that bad. And so um, anyway, so I'm looking at this thing and I'm saying, when Ruth Ginsburg, I thought, when Ruth died, wait a second. That means that you could have Justice Roberts be, you know, that we did that that evens up the odds a little bit because this president's not gonna get voted in with all those ballots. He's not gonna get this, it can't be decided on the third, it can't be certified on December 10th. But I don't think that Kamala Harris is gonna be there on January 20th because I kept now I'm seeing the Trump picture come. It's like with it's like with Back to the Future. I'm seeing Marty. I'm seeing his picture. It's coming into my Polaroid. I'm seeing Trump coming in the Polaroid, but it's back and forth, which is why. I wanted to talk to you. I haven't talked to you in a while. By the way, share this with people. You better share this. All of this, all of these mighty predictions, they're now released. The God's Chaos Code is out. It's the five keys to chaos. The Lord showed me there's going to be five in our lifetime. There's five keys to working through the chaos. Five steps through the chaos into the kingdom that cannot be shaken. And in here we got, because Haggai prophets, Haggai talks about the plague that would come, the economic shutdown that would come. God's dealing with the remnant of his people, the challenge for them to get together and build the house, the awakening that happens is in Haggai, the awakening. And then after the awakening, the Nehemiah phase with the, with the, with the warfare over the, the walls and the gates, the restoration of the culture, it's all right there. And then the rising of the sheep nations rising. And then I started doing my research and oh man, I was finding out about the move of God. This stuff going on in Europe, it's two years ahead of the United States. Uh, in terms of Poland and in terms of Hungary. So they've already kicked Soros out. They shut down the fake news. They've already started laws. They realize that they're getting in there. The Silicon Valley tech people are controlling the media news cycles and controlling the elections and in the universities. It's just like America. We got a real mess on our hands, people. Now, the, the church, of course, the church has, a, has one punch. It's just one punch. It's called uh, Desperate Prayer. Actually, there's two punches. It's Desperate Prayer and a Great Awakening. Desperate Prayer and a Great Awakening. You know, you can't, you, you're not going to win a war just off of desperate prayer and a great awakening because you actually have to show up in Normandy. You got to vote. You got to actually do some faith without works is dead and praying without obeying is useless. So what is God saying for us to do? He's telling us to obey. He's telling us to do some things. And certainly the minimum thing we have to do is we have to reach out to the 30 million Christians who are all Lady Gaga out there because they're convinced that uh, it doesn't matter if they vote or don't vote because God's going to have his way. These people are dangerous. I don't know who's more dangerous, the protesters or these Christians. Um, probably these Christians are not as dangerous because they're never going to do anything that makes them dangerous. But we got to reach the 30 million in our tribe that don't vote. There, there's, you know, it's like, you know, uh, oh my gosh, like 20 million that are registered to vote that don't vote. And then there's another like 25 million, 30 million that aren't registered to vote because they're so spiritual. They're so busy with the revelation that they don't realize the common sense thing. It's kind of like, you know... Um, they don't understand that they're on a plane and people with box cutters are coming down the aisle to storm the pilot. The least you can do is take your iPods out of your ears, turn off your worship and soaking music and trip the uh, terrorist up, in the, at least in the aisle. Help out the passenger crews. They're trying to muzzle the guy. Do something. And so, uh, so the best you could do is, you know, get yourself, uh, go out and vote and reach those people. How are you going to reach them? 
I'm going to give you some information. I'll give you some information because I'm in the game now. I'm, I'm finally finished with my book uh, uh, release, and it's uh, godscastcode.com. It's because what's coming, what's coming, it's all in the book. So uh, now with the Supreme Court situation, I'm seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not an oncoming train for a change. And so, uh, so this weekend we got uh, uh, the big uh, the return going on in Washington. I was, they're always coming up with good labels for this. We had the call, we had the send, we got the return. Um, I, I'm going to have a move. It's going to be paid on delivery, I think. But um, but uh, I, I got to get up there. I got to see this. And Franklin Graham is also doing something. So I'm going to go up and support Jonathan Kahn with the the, uh, the the project there. I don't know what they're doing. They're good brothers. But uh, the thing is, everybody says they're going to repent. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, you remember that. You, of course you remember that. Uh, and turn from their wicked ways, and then, then we'll all forgive their sins and heal their land. So the question is, repent of what? What are we repenting of? I, I, really, I think this is a good question, because most people aren't asking the right question. I know repentance has to happen for God to heal, but what are we repenting of? We can't, we can't, we can't be saying these people that are, you know, bombing and, the, and these, the, you know, they're, they're obsessed with race everywhere, race, 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 everything is racist, everything, and which, you know, it's, which is not true. We can just prove that, but it doesn't matter because everything is racist. It's like being in Germany. Everything is a Jew. The Jew is the problem with everything. No, it's, it's, it's every, you know, everybody's always attacking somebody that they can't defend themselves. You ever notice that? You ever notice nobody's attacking Muslims? How come we don't have anybody that's a problem with Muslims in America? There's like five Muslims in America. Nobody wants to pick a fight with them. <laughs> I don't see any falafel stands burning down. I see small businesses. I don't see any mosques getting decapitated. You see any statues of mosques? They always pick on a Catholic. Yeah, like you know, like the nuns are going to come back and avenge themselves. Hey, we got Sister Josephine's coming back with a vengeance. Never. Now, of course, I'm being facetious. We've got 5% of the American population, or 3 some odd percent is, is Muslim. They're peace-loving people, obviously. We're not hearing anything lately to think otherwise. But my point is, the left never attacks somebody that they're afraid is going to attack them back. Notice they don't touch Hispanic people. Hispanics are left alone. They're not, not going to touch the Hispanic people. The Hispanic people won't put up with it. The Hispanic people, one day you start attacking them, you start accusing Hispanics of being racist. What the, they'll smack you. They're not going to put up with that. It's only, it's only uh, Catholics and with their statues coming down. Although they've got to be careful because there's some, uh, some Hispanic Catholics. But you've got to be very careful when you attack the church. Which church you go after? It better be one of those uh, white Anglo-Saxon, uh, you know, Irish people. Because you go after a Latino, Hispanic saint. Oh, boy, you're not going to sign. I guarantee they're not hitting those churches. Where was I? All right, so here's what's going to happen. I'm trying to tell you what's going to happen. I'm looking over my shoulder here because as I'm talking to you, i got the whole world behind me. I'm checking the whole world out. Constantly with my news sources around the world, State Department sources, all my inside information. You guys are the first people to hear these things when they happen. Godschaoscode.com. Just releasing it. Whew, boy, what a, what, a, what a thing. What a, what, a, what a beast that was. I was wrestling every day. Wrestling that beast. What's coming down this weekend? Okay, back to Washington. So there's the, uh, there's Franklin Graham's going to be walking down, walking down. I pray for peace. And I, I don't think anybody's going to be attacking Franklin Graham. I think that would be a bad, really bad branding. Well, you can't ever guarantee what the left is going to do. They were attacking Republicans after Trump's speech, but I guess they felt that was uh, legit. But I can, it's really, it's probably sordid to go after Billy Graham's family. I mean, you know, it's kind of like you talk about tasteless. I don't think they're going to do that. So, uh, so I, I think there needs to be a million of us show up. So everybody show up. Just go. Just go. And uh, I'll see you there. I'll, I'll run into somebody there. Of course, I'll be disguised. We'll all have our face masks on. I'll have my face mask on. You'll never recognize me. I'll have my Great America face mask on. And uh, anyway, so we're going to march with Franklin. I want to march with Franklin because I love Billy Graham. I always did. And then we're going to we'll saunter on over there to go hear the speakers. And uh, and uh, then uh, then I'm going to check out a location because I'm going to be doing a meeting, an intercessory meeting. You need to join me there because on Reformation Sunday, October 31st, right when Halloween, while the witches are doing their curses and the and all the satanic rituals are happening, we're going to be in Washington, D.C. We're going to be doing a Holy Ghost hootenanny and a hoedown and a hallelujah time. I got Mario uh, Marillo's going to be coming out. I, I got uh, Jeremiah Johnson's coming out. It's, it's we're just going to, so I'm going to go check out some of my secret locations, which won't be very secret by the time I tell you. And uh, we're going to, we're going to be bringing in four days before the election. Boom. Now, this coming weekend, this is important because right now it's Rosh Hashanah. I think I'll stop the broadcast. You know what I found out? 15 minutes. If I go over 15 minutes, it's not, it's not good. People kind of like fatigue. I should probably do this in two parts. 
I do want to tell you what the new year is, because it is the new year. And in, in my Jewish background, the new year, beginning in the year 5777, was the first year I started tracking with the Hebrew meaning of the year. That was the year that Trump went in. I had to fill in for Chuck Pierce. He still hasn't thanked me for this. He hasn't even sent me a love offering yet for this. But I filled in for him in, in, uh, in 2016 because he didn't make it. And uh, I filled in for a meeting in Jerusalem, and I didn't know anything about these, you know, the Hebrew New Year. I was listening to these other guys. And I get a call, hey, Lance, can you help me out tonight? Chuck Pierce can't make it. He can't make it. Would you mind filling in for me? So, well, okay, all right. For this, the, the time has, he's so shrewd. First, he gets me to say yes. Then he says, uh, by the way, you have to talk about what the meaning of the new year is. Go, well, I don't know what the meaning of the new year is. I got enough troubles just uh, prophesying about Donald Trump. And that weekend I did it. Two million people saw a video I did hanging out of the window explaining of the Access Hollywood video. I mean, I didn't need any more trauma. Well, you have to come up, but it's the year 5777. Seven, seven. People are coming expecting that word. So I started getting into it then. You know what that is? The seven was the saying. It was the year of the sword. It was the year of the clashing of swords. It was the beginning of the warfare in the heavenlies. And now it's coming down. I'm going to tell you what this year is because we just crossed into the new year and now this weekend is going to be the high holy day. It's going to be Yom Kippur. It is the, it is the weekend when God decides, according to many on my side of the family, they, you know, they, 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 uh, my friends and Jewish people, they, they, it's when God decides, opens the books and decides the future of the year for people. Well, it's actually for nations. Everybody goes for individuals. It's about nations. But I'm going to come back later. I'm going to tell you about that. Would you like to know? Would you like to know the mysteries of what's coming this next year? What, uh, what's happening? And, and you need to know what's happening. It's 40 days out. This weekend, this 26th, is going to be 40 days before the election. Remember, Nino, 40 days. And it's like, we're coming down to the wire. And I had that Kamala Harris picture of her in the inauguration. I didn't talk to you about this because I was, I was warring against it. And now the Lord's saying, I'm seeing the fading out. I'm seeing the, the devil. The devil may not be able to get what he wants. And that's the way we're going to pray. And that's what I'm going to say. God's going to frustrate him. Certainly America doesn't deserve it. And all, and, and, but these Christians, these Christians that aren't enthusiastic for this president, these Christians that aren't voting, these Christians that aren't registered to vote, these Christians that are confused, and all the Tim Keller people that don't know what to do, that are saying, vote your conscience. Well, your conscience, what, what do you mean? You tell me the word of God doesn't, get, doesn't have a word for your conscience? What the heck? Where the heck are we? Anyway, I'm going to come back. You guys, you guys with me on this? All right, send me, send, me some, uh, send me some love there. Give me some, is my finger over the, uh, the where's the likes? Where's the likes? The likes over here? Uh, the, I, can, I can never figure this out, you know? Oh, forget it. You know, you got to be like, kind of like d dyslexic. You guys, send me some hearts, man. I, I need the energy. There we go, there we go, there we go. Whee! Have you seen The Chosen yet? I'm going to come back later. I'm going to give you guys some exciting information. But I'm also going to show you the Lord ministered me in the most awesome way. I was watching The Chosen. The Chosen is the best, best Christian um, movie, film, artistic series I've ever seen in my entire life. The anointing hit me so hard. I was so whacked. I was so unexpected. It's like, oh boy, I'm going to share with you my favorite scene. I could do it right now. I could do it right now, but I don't know if I should do it right now because I'm way over my 15 minutes. I think I'm going to stop now. It's 11.05. I'm going to call my daughter, Joy, and talk to her, but I'm going to come back. And if I don't come back, I'll eventually come back because I have it all set. I have it set right here. I wanted to show it to you. I wanted to show you my favorite scene. This is so beautiful. I wanted to show it to you. This is so beautiful. As a matter of fact, I'll just show it to you. And share this with your friends. Shalom. It's a beautiful day for picking flowers. Well, if you like the iris, refined and anemone, I sell them in the market. Is that Egyptian? Yes. I grew up there. My father was from oh, Ethiopia. This is so beautiful. He's talking Egyptian. Tamar, Anaki, Nani Yotiahuan. Anaki Yeshua, Nani it's not here. Shalom to you all. Shalom. You were speaking Egyptian. I lived there when I was a boy. Why were you there? We had to leave Bethlehem when I was two years old because of Herodot. You lived in Bethlehem? During the massacre of the innocents? I did. I know the story. Herod had every child in the area under the age of two killed. Yes, but 
was very sad. Not to spoil this beautiful day or anything, huh? Come on. You want to share this, people? Share it. It's fantastic. I love this. So powerful. I am willing. So great. You can imagine what those disciples were experiencing. They were just like you and me watching this stuff. Ah, beautiful Jesus. Smiles, he knows they're learning. Green is definitely your color. Oh. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. <laughs> <laughs> Is that amazing, people? I'm telling you. That doesn't get any better than that. See, I see that. I'm a nicer, I'm a nicer Christian because I see Jesus in a different light. All right, Annabelle just walked in. Annabelle, on my show. How you doing, hon? I was just signing off, but I couldn't resist showing the people a little bit of that great. Well, I know, I know. So uh, but speaking of uh, of not too shabby and uh, giving away the tunics, uh, you, you're giving away stuff all day. What have you been doing today? Every day you're giving away furniture, you're giving away this and that. What's happening? <laughs> Such a good thing. Well, tomorrow uh, all the volunteers are coming and we're going to all meet each other and we're organizing for Thursday and Friday deliveries. So it's going to be amazing. What are you going to do Thursday and Friday? Like, what does that look like? It looks like, I think, about four or five families. Um, one of our friends is loaning us their truck from their, re from their real estate company. And... You're going to get four or five families. What are you going to give them? People don't, don't know what you do. What are you going to do? We're furnishing four or five families. So, there are... I have about 25 families waiting. They all have their date on it on the bulletin board. And what we're trying to do is finish the families that are waiting for certain things. Everyone makes a wish list. Beds? 
It's beds, bureaus, dining room tables, kitchen tables, sofas, nightstands, lamps. Um, people have zero. And they have and really nothing. They have nothing. Suddenly they walk in and it's a furnished it's so house. Cool. It's so cool. And they're mostly single moms? Yes. Almost everybody we work with is a single mom, although we did just furnish a family of seven children with a dad and a mom. That was our first mom and dad. Uh, and they're having their eighth baby. And they had nothing except the rug. They all slept on a rug for one year. Oh, people. Oh, one my one gosh. Oh, so people, pe people, people are used to it. Like they, Some children sleep against the wall with their shirt over their knee like this. They lean against the wall. Some little children just lay on the rug. In their clothes, they don't have blankets or anything. And so I know anyone can get used to anything, but as a mom, we want to see that family flourish in the right. flourishing of their home. Right, right. And you, things can happen a lot easier and better. And that's what we love. Uh, what can they check out what you're doing? It's called furnishingfamiliesoftexas.com. I know it's a mouthful. Furnishingfamiliesoftexas.com. And once you do it, it'll always populate. And at the top, there's a newsletter. So if you want to see what's going Oh, happening, that's so sweet. It's so exciting. And there's a couple of videos you can check us out. Now, can I contribute there on that site? Yes. There's always an opportunity to give. And more yeah. and more people are donating, actually, in our Metroplex. They're giving so stuff. They're giving us stuff, and we can go pick it up. It's amazing. Well, I mean, you know, it's amazing. So I watched, so we have, a, Annabelle's a warehouse. So how big is your warehouse now? Three warehouses now. So Three? One's 2,500, one's 1,000, and one's just like 10 by 13. That's really a, that's really a storage, but that's climate control for the clothes. Three warehouses, and... Uh, Oh, look, they're doing the return advertising yeah, there on television. That's the return on that's TV. That's the return that's on awesome. TV. That's cool. They're doing the right there with Fox or with Laura Ingram. Very good. Very good. I think uh, Al Hartman and some of my friends are helping make that happen. Okay. I'll be back with you. I'll go talk with my wife, check on my daughter. Share this. <laughs> Share this broadcast wife. with other people. And uh, how about that Jesus scene? Was, that, like, did, was, was it worth staying on? See, some people that left, they missed the blessing. And then uh, you got to see that Jesus scene. You got to catch up with Annabelle. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me on this broadcast. And, you know, we could stay connected together. If you subscribe, you're going to be updated on the next broadcast that comes out. And you could like this right here, and we could actually start to create a movement of connected people.